So I'm not sure I've ever done this before. I'm not sure I've ever I'm not sure I've ever interviewed someone in the same room that I interviewed someone else because I <laughs> I did an episode with with Graham way back and he was in this room so it's quite it's it's, yeah. it's, it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> might, might not be weird for you, it's weird for me. So, um what a nice what a nice room it is though. It is a good room. It's where we make all our music. It, it's I, it seems like it might be a squeeze, though. Yeah, it's not big. It's just a little room, but um, it's got everything we need in it. But, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit cosy. Does, does it have a kettle? No, that's in the kitchen next door. Oh, okay. Well, as long as it's not too far away. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah. There's lots yeah. of tea happening at all times. <laughs> yeah, no. It, I mean, the Wave record seems like a record that would be fueled by tea. Yeah. Tea and coffee. <laughs> tea, tea and coffee i would say more tea though yeah okay so what, i'm gonna tell you what i i'm gonna i'm gonna give you some top line thoughts about the wave record i'm sure you're desperate to hear them <laughs> I, I always find there's like a as, as a music journalist i always find that sort of like your job is to make the make the amazing music right that's the musician's job is to make the art right and the music journalist's job is to sort of uh it's a sort of like paint preposterous pictures of, of, of what the music makes them think, right? And it doesn't always go well. I <laughs> do you know? Do you know the band, the Duke Spirit? Yeah, I, I really loved that band back in the day. Mm. And I'm, I remember I reviewed their first record, and I went and, and I wrote this review for the Enemy, and it was like all about folk horror and like uh, the Wicker Man, and I, I just. I just got carried away and I remember meeting the band not long after and then going, are you all right, mate? (laughs) (laughs) Are you you okay? Which was nice of them, but I felt like I'd freak them out. And the thing with your record is it makes me feel a little bit the same. Not that it's in any way similar to the record that that band made, but I think it's very folk horror. Yeah. No, that's fine. Don't worry. That's not a preposterous thing to say. That's definitely was a sort of that kind of English folk thing, a a real cornerstone for where the record came from, I think. Well, I guess what I'm interested in is that when I kind of learned about how the record came about and, you know, it sort of starts, you know, obviously I I, I read that you met Graham during the time of the pipettes and then you kind of reconnected at this fundraising gig at the Jazz Calf and there was this kind of... Let's write a song together. A lot of it seems very uh, sort of uh, almost like kind of happenstance. A lot yeah, of it's, totally. Yeah, and but it but what's weird when I hear the record is it feels very much this is the kind of music you're making by design. Yeah, well, I think like the, there was no sort of grand plan at all, and it, the whole thing just sort of naturally unraveled on its own steam in a way. Um, I think like we obviously, Graham and I had a lot of shared sort of musical interests. So there was a kind of e- a foundation that we could work from that we didn't have to really explain too deep. Like to, we didn't really have to explain to each other what we were trying to search for. It was like we both kind of on the same. And I suppose like we both had an understanding of each other's music. So we sort of knew where each other was coming from in that way or be- to start before we really began. But um, yeah, I think that it it was a kind of amazing to both of us how sort of fully formed the whole aesthetic of it kind of became clear quite in such a short space of time which so there is a kind of serendipitous sort of stars aligning feeling about the record for, and the whole process for me how how did it work in terms of songwriting it, it, i i guess there's too much of a punk in me to say this without wincing slightly, but was there a degree of jamming involved? Not really. Oh, I don't. Right. I'm not a big jam jam fan either, to be honest. But yeah. um, it kind of happened in a way like one one of us would have an initial little idea, and then it could be as simple as just like a little drum beat, or Gray might have a little bass line, or I might have a few chords on the piano. And then we would sort of exchange, like go back and forth between the two of us, where then Graham would layer on a, pe- a bit of guitar or I might sing a melody line. And so the whole thing kind of sort of grew in a kind of Chinese whispers sort of way, where you kind of respond to the, the what the last person did. And then that sort of would trigger an idea for like a string line in me or 
that that's sort of how and we sort of built it sl- slowly from the ground up in that way basically when did you realize that you when did you realize that you had a band when when did you realize that this you had songs and you wanted to make a record as the wave um kind of a few weeks into working because obviously as as he's mentioned like am i i only really kind of drunkenly thought I might be able to get a song made with Graham for like maybe a record of my own. I hadn't ever anticipated that it would turn into this, what it has become. But um, I guess when we started working on Can I Call You, which began as a sort of very, in the way the song begins in a really sort of languorous sort of ballady way. And then we sort of had made this decision to sort of cut the song in half and turn the second half into something with like much more energy and sort of double t- double tempo on the drums and then it suddenly just opened out into this whole other thing and then Graham sort of plugged the guitar in finally after me badgering him a little bit about it and then it just sort of that the whole thing just suddenly felt like it was taking off into this other space which felt and then Graham started to sing as well so that like, we were both putting our voices onto the whole thing which just changed the whole dynamic of what I anticipated so then it sort of became clear that actually this is a bit of a bigger proposition it, it, it's weird to me that you know I was a bit like, I'm going to level with you right I I I was a Graham Coxon nerd as a kid you know I was yeah. obsessed with the guy and it always fascinates me that someone who is so brilliant and innovative on guitar seemingly hates the guitar in a, in, a, in a weird way like and i wonder whether i wonder whether that's part of like his talent as a guitarist is that he's not like i don't know he's not like uh he, i don't sort of sense that he worships at the idol at, at the altar of guitar gods i feel like, like the guitar hero thing i think is a bit of an anathema to him although saying that he was a bit pissed off he didn't get put in the top 100 guitar players in rolling stone the other day <laughs> well, well, see, this is, yeah I, can, I, can... I think the thing about graham's guitar playing which is like what i love about it so much is it he uses it in a way that always subverts what you expect a guitar to do and he's the most he's so sensitive to serving the song it's not about driven by his own ego ever and actually sometimes i sort of feel like i I fucking love his guitar solos because they're so like unexpected and like this, he has such a unique sort of language in his tone. Um, and some I ha- did have to sort of like kick him up the ass about that a bit because it's like I'm not fucking making a record with Graham Coxon and not having some guitar <laughs> solos on there. Well, but, th- but when he really goes for it, he's just got and he's so melodic in the way he thinks about music as well. So you always get something really unexpected from it, which just is amazing to me. Well, yeah, this is what I was thinking. I wondered if there was, I wondered, I, I sort of had visions of you with, you know, sort of pom-poms kind of trying to cheer a bit guitar out of him because <laughs> because there's not loads of guitar on the record. Yeah, but I think um, when he, when it happens, it's sort of more impactful in a way. But I think he was, we wanted to sort of like represent each other in a really equal footing. So he was really generous to give a lot of space to me and my piano chords like um, voicings and making space for the songs to sort of exist without it just being I think he gets worried about like dominating the space because guitar is such a dominant thing and it it can just sort of take over so I think he is just sort of all about serving the song in the most sensitive way really yeah no as it as it as it should be and as as a lot of music that's what makes him such a great guitarist and to me that's yeah. the mark. That's the mark of an amazing musician, in my mind. Someone yeah. that knows where to, what to do. It's the notes you don't play, as the jazzers say. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I, I don't think. I think you make a really good point. I'm not sure I really thought about it before about just how, uh, almost just how, um, I don't know, sort of selfish like the instrument is. Yeah. The guitar, because it it does really push everything out of the way, doesn't it? Yeah. So I think it's something that needs to be used. If, like intelligence really yeah no totally so i'm I'm a big fan of your well it's a bit weird with you rose because i i was i was well into the pipettes like back in the day and then i followed your i followed your solo stuff all the way through did you did you feel like well firstly was there anything in the wave record that really was going to be your solo stuff 
And also, did you feel like this is kind of where you were going with your solo stuff anyway? Because it was kind of getting... that I, I can hear themes within it that I associate with your solo records. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, none of all of it, none of it was um, solo material. It all kind of began afresh when I started working with Graham. But what, what I, what I was really, I felt like he, he, we created a space where I was able to just sort of, ex both of us wanted to sort of exist in our most natural state. So I think that's why it, I, it, I, it does still sound like there are still links between my old records as well, because that's it's I'm sort of just being me within this sort of different under this different umbrella of the wave, which also like draws new drew, drew, drew a lot of new things out of me, but it still managed to like maintain my sense of self within it, which was a real gift actually. I, I've heard you talk about Englishness and like I was sort of alluding to with the, you know, the sort of, my my kind of understanding of it almost like kind of folk horror i'm really interested yeah. in that stuff. like I, I i feel really kind of conflicted about being english in so many ways as i think a lot a lot of us who are empathetic and sensitive and left-leaning are yeah in that in that i absolutely bloody love being english yeah and and I think that this country produces so much amazing stuff like yeah cult like culturally it's almost like yeah. It's almost like for, I was I was listening to a podcast today about national identity and someone was kind of hypothesizing going, well, you know, it was like previously like English, the culture of what it meant to be English was about like empire. And now we look at that with a lot of shame. And yeah. then it was like uh, what happened in the Second World War. That was a long time ago. So it's probably time to shut up about it. So really it is it's art really that is what we do so well. But it is there is a lot of darkness to this country and it's yeah. so woven in being English. Was that on your mind when you were writing songs and making the record? Yeah. I mean, I feel exactly the same as you really. And I feel this very kind of schismodic relationship with what my national identity is. And I think like, I'm always really jealous of like, for example, like my ex bandmate Gweno gets to sort of wear her Welshness as, as such <laughs> yeah, a badge yeah. of honor. Yeah. And it's something that's so celebrated and and quite rightly, but I just don't feel the same sense of pride in for all of the reasons. And not to, you know, especially in the last sort of 12, like 10, 15 years, I would say what it is to be English seems to have been even more, is like even more shameful in a way um so it so but the thing is you also have to you, i can't escape the fact that those my cultural reference points f fundamentally do come from english music and english literature and and my i sing in both graham and i are both singing our own natural accents and so, and you know graham was part of a band that really kind of crystallized a moment in british culture so there's that's something that you can't just shy away from so i think when we were writing the music and also well, we both have a really deep love for the english landscape which i think those are the places that you can kind of find solace and reconnection without without having to sort of carry this sort of burden of all of the things that you hate about being english so i think that kind of this is like a way to sort of harness some of the things that are beautiful about it and try and utilize them in a positive way rather than being sort of really jingoistic about the whole thing well this is it you see because i i would love to get to a point i would love to get to a point where i could say something like do you know what i think it's amazing that this country produced morris dancing that's yeah bo that's bonkers that morris dancing was something that came off these shores w without W worrying that someone's going to think that I'm Tommy Robinson for saying yeah. that, you know? Yeah, it's a really complicated business, that sort of thing. And I think I'm really mindful of it when there's this sort of easy way to kind of, on on the flip side of what I've just said, it's like attaching yourself to this kind of folk identity, it's, which is so in inherently white and actually only represents one like facet of what the British Isles are about. Like you don't want to get too attached to just this sort of one sort of sense. Do you know what I mean? Like this yeah, one yeah. kind of space. But I think those are 
like the sort of folklore traditions are really kind of uh, there is a lot of like outward looking as well within this like inherently within this country like we've been invaded so many times there's and not and not to mention all of the immigration and all the amazing things that that's brought to the national identity which I think is those are the things that I feel really proud about when I like living in London and being conscious of all of that stuff yeah, um absolutely yeah. But yeah, I think it's a really danger. It's a really fragile thing to sort of know how to navigate, really. Yeah, but you know, on on onwards we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to kind of keep making finding your own place in it, which is the kind of onward dialogue, really, that we have with each other. Yeah, I obviously you're in a relationship with 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 Graham, and you made a baby. She's yeah, kind of. <laughs> But, you know, bonkers. that was definitely not a part of the plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 God. I mean, I don't really know how to respond to that. Um, well, I just mean that was like the last thing in my head when I was having this sort of tequila fueled conversation with him <laughs> at the cafe. It got a bit more than I bargained for, but yeah. Yeah, these, these, these things happen, don't they? Do you, uh, I, I've heard apparently, did you. Is it? There's a lot of claust. I think there's a lot of claustrophobia in the songs. You know, yeah. there is that. Do you think that the intensity of being parents and in a relationship and making this record together contributed to that? Well, I, Eliza, my our daughter, wasn't around when we made the first record, and actually, I only found out I was pregnant sort of as we were recording the strings. So that oh, I, right, that is okay. really part of this first album. Okay. But I think the record that we're making now is definitely going to have a bit more of that energy in a way. I mean, I think there is a sense of claustrophobia partly because, I mean, we're, uh, we're writing in this really small room and also it was still the kind of dying breaths of lockdown. So there was a sense of sort of internal insularity, which I think maybe had an impact on the way the songs came out. But um, I think that, yeah, like the way writing you know since then obviously our daughter was born last uh, two summers ago and that's had like a, you know we've been touring with her and having to sort of juggle writing and navigating childcare and and actually for me I found it a real challenge to sort of have like relocate myself in songwriting again after that like because obviously having a child is such a seismic shift in your whole sense of identity and even and your physicality and everything so sort of and I haven't like read a book in fucking two years because I'm so exhausted yeah. so I feel like really out of the world of words and just all of that stuff is and have you know just living at like life just in some ways becomes so much smaller when you're just like looking after a small baby so I think that it's going to be the way that this next record is forming is kind of got a lot of that stuff to contend with, which I think has been a really interesting process. I used to live on the same street as James Ford, which, oh, was, right. which was quite weird when I was working at the NME because you would like, you'd sort of walk past his house, James would say, hey, yeah. And then I'd go, hey, yeah. And then like a month later, you'd be reviewing a record that he'd made. Yeah. Um, what was it like working with him? Oh, brilliant. I've always wanted to work with James. I've known him for a long time. And um, it was great to finally have something that I thought to bring to him that I thought he would be really great with. Because, um, I mean, me and Graham, like our writing process is, involves that, like really developing the sonic quite a lot, just the two of us. So we delivered some quite well-developed demos to him, which required a quite a sensitive a pair of hands to deal with like the last thing we would want was like a really big ego to come in and just sort of blast through it and take over and James really understood that and just augmented what we'd already got and brought it to life and like he's such an, like he just gets the most perfect drum sounds for, just for one thing and um was really understood the way that the song because the songs that didn't sort of work in like tradition a lot of them don't really follow not traditional song structures yeah yeah he was really open-minded to all of that stuff um but yeah it was great and we're working with him again for the second record i again this might be me projecting a little bit of my uh sort of like the well well like i, I don't need to throw it clear i i guess that like 
obviously, obviously, Graham is in Blur, who are one of Britain's biggest bands. You know, literally yeah. saw them fill a football stadium this summer, and you know, it's been kind of quite a long time since you've been in a group, and like Blur. You know, Blur are like back, right? But they're such a massive machine that it's yeah. kind of. I, I guess there was almost part of me that when you were doing this project, it felt a little bit like the two of you had found a bit of a home. Yeah. You know? Like, and I, I thought that was really exciting. You know, I mean, you know, Graham's always talked about having a complicated relationship with Blur, but actually, kind of having, I don't know, sort of a, a like a shared place to make music. Does it? Does yeah. it feel like that? Yeah, it really does. I just feel like I can't still believe that I get to make music with him. He's just like. The most amazing collaborator anyone could ever wish for and i actually think damon would say the same in the way that he serves the music in such a like um generous way and he's just so full of music as well like there's just he's just constant i just can't believe that he's got the capacity to like be doing all this blur stuff and then still have the energy to come to the studio and work on our music um but i definitely think that we both feel like this is I, I just feel like I found my sort of, yeah, like a sort of home for what I've always wanted to do, really. And I hope that Graham feels the same. Oh, that's, I love that. Um, you know, the wave sounds like, like if I put Doctor Who on on Saturday and the Doctor was like, we must combat the wave. Like it would sound like the way the wave, especially the spelling of it, it, it sounds like it could be a Doctor Who villain. <laughs> yeah, I've never thought of it like that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry if I've just ruined your band for you there. No, like, not at all. Always going to be thinking of Daleks when you make records. Yeah. If a fall goes to plan, uh, when when will record when will album two be ready? Hopefully in the second half of next year. So yeah, we're cranking it out. I think we just want to keep keep moving, really. Yeah, yeah. Just I mean, what else is there? Well, yeah, exactly. What else is there? It's exactly right yeah let's make stuff let's take this let's let's take the good times back yeah um what about live shows i was gonna come and see you play last year but for whatever reason i didn't and i regret that you fool <laughs> yeah sorry about that um well we've got some stuff we're going to announce in the next couple of weeks so i'm not really allowed to say but yeah we're definitely going to be doing i mean graham like we couldn't really do as much festival stuff last summer because graham was busy with his other band yeah yeah um but hopefully we're gonna get a bit more stuck into that stuff next year this year coming and um, listen i felt totally torn when i did graham right because i did i did a bit for the observer and so i was asking him some blur stuff right and his book had come out so it seemed you know pertinent and yeah. i was asking him about blur and i think i said something like oh would you um I said something almost about sort of festivals, you know, like, oh, I think it was because Pulp had got back together and they were doing some big shows. Yeah. And I was like, oh, would you, you know, would you do some festivals? And he said, he totally stonewalled me about Blur. Like, totally, like, <laughs> oh, well, you know, you've kind of got to be in the conversation to, and I was, and, and then when it got announced, I was like, Graham Coxon, light <laughs> in my face. <laughs> and like, I understand why. But I was also part of me going, God, we've all come a long way from me having posters of him on my wall and me like me looking at pictures of him in Select magazine and going, I wonder if I can find that tank top in a charity shop. You know what I mean? <laughs> to him lying to me. So, but... <laughs> well, aren't you honoured? But to be in, in defence, like it actually was the sort of thing that it really wasn't necessarily going to happen until it was going to happen you know it's one of those it's oh, such yeah. a as you say it's like such an enormous juggernaut so there's so many moving parts to get into place before they were able to actually put all fully commit to saying that this is really happening well so, I, yeah. I, 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 it, it might not have been as much of a lie as you think well, well i say this to say that at least you had the decency to say there's some stuff i can't talk about yet <laughs> rather <laughs> rather than i'm just gonna lie to you james um, <laughs> Listen, Rose, uh, it was so, so nice to talk to you. Like I say, it's been so weird that I go way back to listening to the pipettes and that's a long time ago. And we've, our paths have never crossed, though. I think we know loads yeah, of some people. Funny. So yeah. it's uh, it's really nice. And thanks for coming on the podcast. And oh, my to pleasure. To me. I, think, I, I, I think the record is fantastic. It's in my list of favourite albums, which I'm going to be publishing on my Substack any, any day now. And oh, uh, I can't wait to hear the next one. Nice one. Thanks so much. Brilliant. Have a nice day. See you later. Bye. Bye.